Today we pick up in verse 7 and we see Abraham going to Bethel. Now Bethel is the house of God. It's a place where Abraham and others throughout scripture will go to be close to God and to hear his voice. And so he's going to go to Bethel. And we pick up in verse 7. Then the Lord appeared to Abram. Now remember, this is after Abram has been obedient. He's left Haran. He's gone to the place that the Lord would show him. He's being obedient. Lot has gone with him. He's passed through Shechem in the land of Canaan. And now the Lord appears to him. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So this is where the whole reference in the Old Testament to Canaan being the promised land comes from. It is a land that God has promised. I'm going to give this to your descendants, Abraham. You're childless at this point. God hasn't yet revealed about that detail. But Abraham, I'm going to make a nation of you. I'm going to make you famous. People that bless you, I'm going to bless. People that curse you, I'm going to curse. This is the land I'm going to give you. Pretty cool. You've been obedient, you follow God, he's taking you to this land, now God's showing you literally the land that your descendants will have as their nation. So this is where the land of Canaan uh, comes from, and it's reference to promised land. So continuing on, the Lord says this, to your offspring I will give this land. So he, that is Abram, so he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Verse 8, from there he moved to the hill country, on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going toward the Negeb. So Abraham stays at Bethel for a while, and he worships the Lord. He spends time with the Lord. That's why I kind of think we could maybe liken Bethel today to almost like church, or a spiritual retreat. It's time of spending with the Lord in his word, uh, praying, worshiping him. And then Abraham journeys on. Abraham is going to live the life of a nomad. God does not give him the land during his lifetime, and yet he has God's sure promise, God's very own name, God's very own word, that God has promised he will give that land to Abraham's descendants. But Abraham nonetheless is being obedient. He's spending time with God. And so my question to you is, in our lives, in the midst of Canaan, so to speak, the promised land, We know that God has promised us that one day we will uh, go to heaven, spend eternity with Christ. The Lord will one day return. Christ will reign on earth and this land will be Eden restored. We have that promise. Yet, even in the midst of living a saved life, a redeemed life, we've been forgiven from our sin and we're awaiting heaven. But even now, as we're living our, our life with the Lord, at the same time, We have those temptations to live according to the flesh. We're in the land of Canaan. There are the Canaanites around us and temptations and the the allure and very much so it seems ease to do things our own way rather than God's way. And yet in the midst of this land, there can be Bethel. There can be communion and worship of the Lord. I think there's also the important point to note that in our Christian lives, by way of application in this passage... We do journey on. We are pilgrims. Many old songs and even old sermons talk of that quite a bit, that we are pilgrims as believers on this earth. We have those places where we can plant and we we can have Bethel of spending time with the Lord and worshiping Him. But we are pilgrims. We are nomads, so to speak, on this earth because our only real home is heaven and with the Lord. And so we're journeying through this earth. We're journeying through this life. Maybe you've attempted. If I'm honest, I know there's times in my life where I've attempted to plant myself down and, you know, to kind of settle in. But I can't make my eternal home here. I can't place my value or my trust in things around me. We all have those temptations. There are times that are really great times the Lord speaks. Sometimes it's Bethel, but we just, like Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration, it's a great moment with God, and yet we want to just build a tabernacle and stay there. And God's not God's will. It's a blessing to be close to Him and have those times of really vibrant manifestation of God's presence and intimacy with Him at Bethel, but at the same time, we are pilgrims. He calls us to move on and to go through seasons in our lives. 
And so perhaps you've come out of a time of Bethel. You've been close to God, but you're trying to hang on to it and not being obedient to go on because you want to keep living in that moment. That is a temptation we can have. We can idolize the experiences of God.